And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Today, we're taking a look at Deserted Animals. This is a game from Latvia, go figure. Um, it's, it's always neat to see games coming from uh, all places in the world that I haven't got them before. Uh, this is, it says on here, a fun survival game set in a cartoon-like environment. And that's very true. If you look at the, the back of the box or even the front of it, I suppose, you can see how the animals are all very cartoony. Um, but you're being a survivor. So imagine playing the game Survivor uh, with knives and stuff, but you're cute little animals. It's a little disconcerting on how all that fits together. Let's take a look at the game. Before I show you the game, though, I will mention that the game, you know, the quality isn't the greatest in the world. As you see, the box here is just a box that has a sleeve around it, but that doesn't mean the game is bad. So the board is set up here uh, on the outside. You have a spot where you'll be able to put a marker that matches your character. And this marker is going to either represent life or food. There's actually two games involved here in Deserted Animals. In one of them, you are gonna start with no food and try to get food as the game progresses. In the other, you will start with 20 life and you're trying to beat everybody else down. Now, on your turn, your animals are going to start here. And no matter which game you're playing, you basically play the same way. The simple thing is that your goal is different. But you can move from one spot to an adjacent spot, in which case, if it's unrevealed, you'd flip it over to see what type of terrain it is. And as the game progresses, you're going to find more and more types of terrain. You can see that there's desert, there's an oasis, there's a forest. Um, there, eventually you'll run into farmland and mines. Um, and so as you're moving around, once you move onto a spot, whether it's first revealed or not, you can draw a card from the appropriate pile and add those cards to your hand. You then can use those cards sometimes in different combinations, or if there's another animal there, you can attack an animal. Uh, and so when you attack somebody, you will do damage to them and hurt them. Now, in the survive game, you're losing a life every turn. You'll lose two if you've been injured. And so you gotta heal yourself, so you wanna injure people. And in the other game, you're simply trying to get food. Each player has a chart that shows all the different things you can get and, the, and how many are in each deck. For example, in wood, there's 12 of them in the forest deck, go figure, while there's none of them in the mines. There's four in the desert, I guess there's wood laying around there and then three and three. So you can see there's different combinations and that's a good thing that it will teach kids kind of probabilities of what is in what deck. Then over here it shows the combinations. If I have different combinations, I can put them together maybe here, make a big bag. Normally I can only hold seven uh, cards, but the big bag if I build that will allow me to hold up the 10 cards or I can stop people from stealing cards from me. The cards of the game, you have basic resources which you'll use for combos. You have wood and you have metal and you have leather, and you have seeds, and you have matches, and duct tape, because, you know, animals often use duct tape. You also will find water, which can help out in different situations. It's very useful in uh, helping with your food, or you can combine it with different things. And then food itself, which can be used by itself, or with food, to, to, uh, with other things to get basically more food. You have a first aid kit, something very useful if you're injured. And then you have coffee, <laughs> yeah, which lets you go two turns without eating food. You will also find different weapons that you will use to attack other animals. Sometimes you'll find this card, in which case you put that on the spot, and that spot no longer can have cards drawn from that spot. It's been depleted. Other times you'll draw these cards, which will bring a wild boar on the table in the middle spot, the sludge spot, and if there already are wild boars on the table, it will move them all in the direction shown on the card. And then finally, sometimes a boar will just jump out of nowhere and get you. And so players are going over the course of this game, again, trying to accomplish their goal as they slowly reveal more and more tiles and just draw cards and try to get those combos and go around attack, avoid the, ba the boars. So you essentially can have a more wicked game in a sense uh, where you're attacking one another. Uh, or you can play a more peaceful game, although the attacking each other is still legal in that regard. And the first person to accomplish their goal is the winner. So what do I think of Deserted Animals? Well, I played it with kids because I really think that's the intended audience. Um, because I think adults just aren't going to find any interest in this at all. They, 
going and discovering new land types, if you think about it, that really doesn't matter when there's only five land types. So once you find those five land types, the only reason you would move to a new one was if one gets depleted. And okay, so that will force you to move to a new one. Other than that, there's no reason, shut the door, there's no reason to move around from one spot to the other spot. Now, the game is very lucky. Like I said, it teaches the odds of what's in the different piles. And so kids are gonna, oh, I find wood here. I find, uh, this, this is the best pile to find food in. So I'm gonna go for that. So there is that. That's okay. And I think, and, and, and the kids that I played it with had no problem with that. They, they enjoyed going back and forth and, and drawing cards and making combos. And I liked the combo thing. I liked the fact that there was all these different cool combos and you could uh, put them together. But there's also a lot of turns in the game where you draw something and say, oh, another wood, nothing I can do with that. Oh, another one of these, nothing I can do with that. Uh, the game also is a little mean. Now I played both modes and, and the survivor mode can be a bit mean as you walk around whacking each other and fighting and then trying to find food to heal yourself. Um, so where do I stand on this? Well, I wish it was better quality. I wish there was a little less luck involved, but the kids I played with had no problem with either one of those, uh, any of the groups that I played with. They all enjoyed it much more than I did. Uh, they liked going back and forth. They liked getting the cards and the combinations. And for them going to a new tile to turn it over, even if they, they, they every group I played with, it was totally important to them to turn over every tile on the board. I said, well, you know, obviously that's just another desert, another, who cares? It's white and that's unacceptable. So there you go. I think that's definitely, is definitely a family game, target audience. Um, I'm not super positive about it but it does have a group of people who certainly do like it. And I think this is the kind of game that you can hand the kids, say, here's how you play, have fun playing, leave, come back, and all is well. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com. Shut the door! Yeah. Yeah.